Welcome to the 1875 podcast, the weekly podcast all about Blackman Rovers, brought to you by RoversChat.com, the number one Blackman Rovers fan website. Welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of the 1875 podcast, we're back, we're ready, we're ready for the season, it starts in just, well depending on what day this comes out, it's a couple of days, one or two days, um, it's exciting, heading down to Ipswich, long way to go, and uh, welcome back one of our regulars, Matt, hello, how are you doing, are you looking forward to the start? Uh, hi Lee, hi John, thank you very much, uh, again good Again, good to be uh, back on episode 2, yeah, uh, Feeling very excited. Uh, season is just round the corner. Yeah, uh, and we've been deserted by Tom this week, so we've we've had to find a, a replacement, which is arguably a better replacement than uh, <laughs> what we had before. So we had him on last year, I think about October time, uh, and that's Dan from uh, now Galazio, or probably as, as... Did I say it right then, Dan? That is right. You, you hit the nail on the head. Galazio, that's the one. No and, longer uh, Welsh and Yeshi. And uh, most of you will probably know him more from Top Blackburn if you're listening to this. But uh, welcome, Dan. Welcome back. Good to have you back. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be back on. I'm excited. Are you looking forward to the start of the season? I'm presuming not. <laughs> I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm actually quite. I'm. I'm a bit of mixed emotions until we signed um, Palmer. If I was honest, I was. I was like, oh my god, we're going to do so bad. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> we signed someone again, and I was like, never midfielder. Oh well. But I was like, right, you know what? I just can't wait now. I'm just like, I need football back. I need my Saturdays <laughs> watching football. So no, I'm actually. Has, has, it, been has it been a um, has, has it been a quiet summer for you with Wales not being involved in the World Cup, Dan? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, um, it has it has been all fairness. Um, very quiet. I did pick a team. I had a um, a team in like a sweepstake. And I had Nigeria, don't get me wrong, lush kit, but they were out straight away. So it was yeah. literally, I had no luck whatsoever. Wales nor in it, my sweepstakes team were nor in it, near enough. So, but no, World Cup was all right in all fairness, quite enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, I think the, my major downfall for the, the the World Cup was the diving and the, the cheating and all that. It was a lot, there was a lot of it. But we'll get back to uh, Premier League football and Championship football. Mm-hmm. So... I'll just talk a little bit about um, Dan and his channel and what and what's going on. But uh, first of all, I want to know why why the change from Welsh Dragon because it seems to be going well, especially last time we spoke, and uh, why he decided to move away from that and, um, and start again. This yeah, it, it was going well in all fairness. Last year I had my my best year on YouTube for like about like two years or so, um. So it is a bit of a, a left field thing to do um but no it was a variety of things that's happened over the last couple of months um which and to be honest i have thought about this decision for a long time because um a couple when about a year or two ago when i was still doing welsh and yes year, I, I know it's a channel just it was growing but it was growing very very slowly um up until last year um and i was just like do i do a new channel do i just take the plunge start again um and be more consistent because that was one of my downfalls on my last channel i was kind of quite inconsistent from times um and i thought oh you know what then something happened in june uh, i won't get into boring details of it but something made me think of it and go right you know what you need to think about this serious now are you going to do a new channel just because of something that happened and um i thought i'm gonna do it what's the worst that's gonna happen um <laughs> But the I've always wanted a second channel as well. That's another reason. I've wanted to do a second channel with other games, but I always stop it because I get bored. And I thought, yeah. why don't I move FIFA and football-related stuff over to a new channel, which I love because I always kept going back to FIFA and I might not stop and then do other games on while shining the SG. So whether other games will go on that channel, I'm not sure, but I thought, I'm just going to take the plunge and just kind of give it a go, if I'm honest. Start a new channel, see what happens. So Welsh Dragon isn't dead, but it, it, is it not? Or... It's it's kind of, if I'm honest, it's more of, uh, it's in the church. <laughs> 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 uh, 
um, type of thing. No, I wouldn't say it's completely dead at the moment because I wouldn't. Obviously, we're, it's got 20, 22, 23,000 subscribers. So I don't particularly just want it to just drop off. Um, something will happen with it over the next couple of months, but I don't know what that is just yet. But all FIFA football related stuff is going on Golazio right now. I started uploading as well. So, uh, but yeah, I thought let's just do it because I thought about it for a year and I was just like, I'm going to do it. And I made that new channel. Sometimes good to have a fresh start, but what, what's the difference? Obviously I've noticed a crossbar challenge. Um, yes. Is that going to be one of the main differences between this and, and Welsh Dragon? Yeah. So, um, obviously FIFA content's going over there. Um, I'm going to be very niche kind of with my content, more focused with a particular area of FIFA. Um, like obviously in my past channel, I've gone to help my team. I've gone the career mode. I've done pro clubs and everything. I kind of want to get myself quite narrow with the FIFA side of things. So, um, so I'm going to be doing now as well. Lots of FIFA stuff, um, lots of FIFA 19 as well. Lots planned for it. But yeah, there is going to be a lot of real life football stuff because I've always wanted to do it. And I've kind of gone like, oh, I kind of don't want to go out in public with a camera. <laughs> um, but I was just like, you know, one day I just thought, I'm just going to do it. it. Whether it turns out good or not, I don't know. Um, and I thought I just went down to the field one day as it was like 35, 40 degrees, probably worst decision I've ever done. <laughs> um, and I just recorded it. And I thought, all right, then I quite enjoyed it. Let's just keep doing it. It's a, it's a nice, it's actually quite a nice video to edit because it's quite different because you can add. Yeah effects uh, music to add that bit of drama and tension that type of thing so it's uh yeah it's gonna be something that's introduced not as frequent as fifa but i would say possibly maybe every couple of weeks you get like a real life football video yeah that, that's good i enjoyed it i i felt sorry for you to be honest because i thought like he's gonna he, he has to go and keep getting these balls because <laughs> it, I, did you lose any because it looked like it was just like wilderness down there i i didn't lose i lost one which was the ball that I kicked at the very end because I was like, I can't be bothered to go get it because it's flat. Um, but no, uh, it is literally stingy nettles, fawns, the full thing. So if you have seen the video and we're in shorts, I should have took a picture because I came out. I mean, literally my legs were bloody. They were all oh cut my God. Uh, and everything because I was like, I bought two brand new footballs. They're on offer in Sports Direct. I thought I'm having these. And um, <laughs> I was like, I can't let them go. And I went in near Gorham and literally my legs were just cut to pieces. Um, but there's nowhere else for me to go. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> it's like I either go up that end and go into all the fawns and everything, or I go down the other end, which is just a massive drop. So oh, it's yeah. like, I'm not too sure. It was kind of pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I enjoyed watching it. It was fun. Cheers. And I'll, I'll watch more if you bring them out in the future. Cheers, thank you. Thank but, yeah. You. Uh, if you haven't gone check his channel out, obviously it's, it's new. Plenty more to come, as he said. It's Glazio. Um, and you head over to uh, quickly look at it. And it is at this is Glazio on Twitter. And uh, follow him on there. He's always putting lots of good stuff. I do follow him. Um, and most of you will probably know him from Talk Blackman anyway, because he's regularly posting on there. But let's get into. Um, Looking at our beloved Blackman Rovers now. So we're just going to have a quick look at what has been the pre-season. And I want your thoughts on it. I'll start with you, Matt, because you've been quiet. Um, what are your thoughts on the pre-season? Obviously, it, it, results haven't been as positive last year. But there's been, I think there's been more of a focus of just get, it's been about game time rather than anything else. It's all about getting the minutes, as, as you said. Uh, you know, it started... Uh, very well up in 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 Edinburgh. Um, you know, I think we were still caught up in in World Cup fever at that at that point. You know, we you, you, the notes here saying that you know that the you know the youngsters got mixed in with uh, some of the first teamers, and you know that that was great. So as I said, it was all about getting like minutes, and then you go into likes of you know Port Vale away, you get a draw there, uh, Liverpool, which I thought. We we did fantastic in the first half, and then we we you know we changed the team the second half, and Liverpool changed their team in the second half, and I, I thought the, the 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 balance completely you know completely changed. Um, Lincoln obviously we just we we, uh, we 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 won by the odd goal, and I, I thought that um, it all kind of 
cultivate. I think the result through pre-season, as far as Rovers are concerned, were, was the Everton game. I think we absolutely smashed them, um, Everton, and um, we, we dominated for large periods of the game. You know, uh, Bradley Dack, just, again, just shows what a, a talent he is. Uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, him being unleashed on the Skyback Championship because uh, I think he'll he's, he's going to be uh, one to watch and um, I, I don't I, I'm not too sure how uh, if the you know the Championship teams have, have, have planned to deal with Bradley Dak or not but uh, we shall see when we uh, open up the fixture uh, uh, fixtures on Saturday and then it again I think because you know we 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 played a largely um, strong first team on on the Thursday against Everton. Um, we we kind of put back a, a more or like second string against Aquinton, and um, you know we we end preseason on a defeat. But like like with any preseason, it's all about game time. It's all about you know kind of bed those new players in. Um, at the moment, we've only got two. Uh, well, we only had two involved, but and then obviously we've got uh, Casey Palmer, who's just come in. Uh, beforehand, so um, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be very exciting going in going into Saturday. And I think we'll get a, you know we'll get a positive um, positive outcome on Saturday. I really do. Yeah, let's hope so. Um, what about you, Dan? Have you did you catch either of the Liverpool or the Everton or both? Yeah, I've I caught the highlights and stuff. I'll see the everything that's floating around. I'll see. I think the Liverpool game was streamed, so I I ended up watch I watching most of that. Um, but uh, to be honest, I think some of the preseason games, I think like everything you mentioned there, obviously is about getting minutes in, getting that fitness, how to mix around with the teams. Um, I'm kind of um, it was. I think it was quite a decent preseason for us in all fairness. And I know it's not as good as it was before, but we played a lot more tougher teams with Liverpool and uh, Everton in all fairness, which I think has helped the team with um, just that trying to play against our Premier League team, that ability that they have, that little bit extra Premier League team as well. I say that when we play Everton, that was just something else that you mentioned there, Matt. I was, to be honest, I was shocked when that result came in against Everton. (laughs) <laughs> to be fair, I, I just, I thought, oh God, they battered that team 22-0. Don't get me wrong, it was like seventh tier English football. But you thought I thought momentum was going to be on their side. Um, but uh, no, I have to say, pre-season I think was all right. A lot of um, changes to the team, which is given Mowbray a lot of options throughout the season now. I think he's going to decide over the next couple of weeks who goes out on loan and who ends up staying. I think that's kind of one of the reasons he's changed the team quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, but uh, when I say decent, decent preseason. Do you, do you look at the, the games like Port Vale, Lincoln and Stanley? Um, we've played the second string and, and some of the youth players. And do you, do you wonder whether we have uh, good enough backup players to, to cover ourselves if we do get injuries because, yeah, it's Stanley, it's Lincoln, the lower tier, but should we still be beating them even in pre-season? We, technically, we should still be beating them, but to be honest, the teams that we did pair out have never really played with each other. So a lot of the players, the youth players, such as like Travis um, and many other players that we did end up playing in those particular games, our second string players, they won't necessarily all be playing together. They'll be slotting in. So I think the players that we did feature, those second string ones, will be good when they slotted into a first team scenario, when you do have the likes of Dark in midfield and Smallwood and everything, the full team, um, and then they slot in. I think they'll end up playing really well. I think that's the only reason we really lost them, just because the team that we had out never really, the second string never really played with each other. They were kind of right this front together. This is our backup. This is how well they play together. But I think they'll those individ, as individual players, they'll do really well slotting into the first team when needed, I think. Yeah. Are you confident heading into to which lips, like Matt said, that we'll get a positive result? Um, I think we'll end up with a draw in our result. I, I'm a bit I hate the first game of the season <laughs> because I tend to overexcite myself and be like, Oh my god, we're gonna do so well, we've signed these players pre season. It's a good job we didn't do that last season. Let's just say that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of, I'm kind of mixed emotions with it. Like I'm excited for it. Um, 
like I've been looking at all the odds and stuff of where we're going to finish the predictions and everything. It's so mixed. Like I think odds wise, we predicted to finish 14th. The BBC finished, we predict we was going to finish fourth. Um, Sky <laughs> predicted we was going to finish sixth. Honest to God, I'm just like, you're playing with my emotions right now. Um, <laughs> should I get excited for playoffs? I don't know. And then I look at the team, I'm like, well, that's pretty decent. But ha- a lot, some of them haven't played championship football, really. No. So I think it's going to be the same as last year. I think we're going to start off um, possibly a draw against him switch and then a little bit stutter out the stumbling block, uh, stumble out the blocks, and then we'll kind of get our foot in the ground again. I think yeah. that's what I think will happen again. Um, and then probably by October, November, we will kind of be at a steady ship. Yeah, let's hope so. I don't want to make any predictions, to be honest, because... <laughs> <laughs> it's normally wrong, but I think if we can if we can go to it so it's get a result if we can start strong, who knows what's gonna happen then. Yeah, exactly. Um yeah. but it doesn't really seem the Blackburn way to be quite honest. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think if we can go down to it so it's get a point. And if we can finish fourth or sixth, um then that is probably <laughs> the best season anyone could have hoped for. Um, I don't care could handle playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I but was I, hoping we did not have them in League One. I was like, I cannot handle yeah. playoffs. No, it would it would have broke us as a club, mm. as a town. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'd be happy with fourteen to be fair. Nice, nice, safe first season. Yeah, I think I think as long as we have a nice, solid season, as long as when it comes to the last um, five or six games that we're not like, oh my god, we need to win every single game. Like obviously yeah. when when we did get relegated two seasons ago. As long as it's not like that, I don't think I'll be bothered. I think that a nice lower mid-table finish would be a pretty good one for us. And uh, I think as long as we get another signing in, another forward, there's no reason we, can do, we can't do that. Yeah. Well, as we're talking about the upcoming season, I wanted to do a little something today, uh, just looking at teams this season that we, we're looking forward to playing or we think is going to be a danger. Uh, so we've all, all three of us picked a team, I think. Um, Mine is Derby because I was a huge fan of Lampard as a player. Um, and I've listened to quite a few of his press conferences. I think he's going to be a brilliant manager. Um, and you just look through the team. I mean, there's some Tom Lawrence is there, and I think he's come on leaps and bounds since he left us uh, on loan. Uh, you look at players like David Nugent, who can score. They've still got uh, Vidra, who's... Might be leaving, but then you've got Blackman, who's come on brilliant since he's left us, as people normally do. Martin Olsen, um, this just the team is just like littered with good players. Joe Ledley, Tom Hoddleston, it's quite a decent team to be fair. And then they've added uh, someone I would have loved to see at, at Ewood, and that's Jack Marriott. Um, mm. What a player he was in League One, and he, I think it easily can do it in the Championship. Um, I think he's a fantastic player, and I think Derby are going to be a, a team to watch this season. I'm going to be following him just purely because of Lampard. Um, mm. I think he can do a good job, hopefully. I'll be disappointed if he doesn't. But yeah, that's my team. Um, what about you, Matt? Have, uh, did you pick Leeds? Uh, yeah, I, I, I went for Leeds. Um, they, they, they've been, obviously, they've been... Um, they've been out of the Premiership for for quite a while now, um, a, longer than us, in fact. Um, and you know, they, they, they're going out this they, they've gone out this summer and, and just purchased uh, Patrick Bamford from Middlesbrough uh, for ten million. Um, okay, it, Bamford he's he's been at our neighbours down the road and me, so. Um, Okay, he's he's been he's become a bit of a journeyman striker, really, in in that sense. And you know, he, he's only he's only like twenty four, uh, and you know, this is kind of his is like tenth tenth league club. Um, you know, a lot of loans out of out of Chelsea, as uh, as we as we know, they like to loan out players. Um, so, um, you know, he's he's had loans at Burnley, Norwich, Crystal Palace, Middle, Middlesbrough, uh, Derby. Uh, and then got a permanent move from Middlesbrough. Now he's just signed for Leeds for ten million. So you know they're, they're not uh, they're not scared to. Well, I, I'd just be interested to find where they've actually found ten million from. I know they've just been 
kind of like taken over, but uh, where that kind of, um, you know, where that kind of like leaves their finances, I, I'm not too sure that they've, you know, they've managed to find 10 million and, and, and stay within FFP. They, I mean, they've, they've, they've got a great fan base as well. Let's not, let's not take away from their fan base. Uh, very loyal. Uh, follow them everywhere. They, they, they sell out their away allocations week in, week out. So they've, they've, they've got a great fan base. Uh, I, I just think it's their possibly their their year where they um, they threaten you know the, the the top six. I think um, I, I, last last year I think they finished uh, finished mid table. I think they were they were they were bouncing, weren't they? At one point, and then they they just kind of like fell away. So uh, my my team's leads. Um, it's it's they're always great games. I think we we, we always do quite all right against them, um, if I remember rightly. But um, we'll, we'll we'll just have to see. Uh, but um, yeah, Leeds is Leeds is my team. Let me just say that is a lot of money to spend on a player that only scored eleven goals last season. In the league, it, it, it is, and, and as, as I've said there before, he, he, he has become a bit of a you know a, a journeyman, and he Bamford. But um, yeah, again, a problem, perhaps like a couple of years ago when I, I think when we had, when, I think we probably had an opportunity to sign him at one point uh, on loan. This is from from Chelsea, and he, he went elsewhere. Um, you know, we were we were I think we were linked with quite heavily with 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 Patrick Bamford at, at one point, but um, that for whatever reason it didn't work out. I think we went for a, a dodgy Portuguese player, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it was around that time. Um, so yeah, it, it'd be interesting. I mean, they've, they've got Barry Douglas, uh, uh, Scott, uh, the left back from uh, Wolves as well, three million. Uh, so you know, they, they've spent you know they spent thirteen million. Uh, and um, actually, they've signed four left backs, four registered left backs in uh, in this summer transfer window. So, um, so yeah, it's they've they've brought in Jamal Blackman and Lewis Baker from Chelsea and and Jack Harrison and um, from Manchester City. So I think I think we were linked with him as well. I believe uh, there was meetings with him, but um, it will be the the. the the Manchester youth and Manchester City youth player that we were looking at, but uh, he has gone to Leeds. I'm just looking. They signed um, is it Ronald Vieira, I think this summer. I was say Ronaldinho then for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and like, is, is that Patrick Vieira Sutton? I think it is. It is. Might yeah. be wrong. I think it is. Um, I'm sure it is because I remember there was a lot of talk around there. Yeah. At one but, point, because I. I can't really say that's a decent signing, but you never know. If he's anything like Patrick Vieira, he's going to be a cracking little player. Um, mm. Have you seen that player who looks identical, got the Pilo, and plays exactly like him? He plays for Napoli at the minute. Youth player, he's only like 17. <laughs> no, I haven't. He no. is literally identical to the Pilo. <laughs> the way he takes free kicks, the way he passes the ball. It's nothing that he's not his son or anything, but I was just thinking of comparisons of players. Like he, He's literally identical to him. Hate everything. <laughs> no, I haven't seen him. I'm just having a quick look now. Um, so have, have you picked a team? Is it? Did you say Brentford? Um, yeah, Dan? I've gone for Brentford because um, I can't remember the season they got promoted, but they were always a team. When I was always looking at statistics, their striker was always at the top. Near enough, he was. They were always close to the top, um, and they've always been just outside of playoffs. I think they finished ninth last yeah. season in the championship. And I think they're one of those teams which I've actually watched and they don't necessarily have a spell where they do really well and then drop and do rubbish for the rest of the season. They just seem to have quite a consistency and each season they grow and grow upon that. Um, and I honestly think that they are probably going to get playoffs this year. I just, they're a bit of a kiddies heel for a lot of teams. Um, just because I think nobody expects, nobody knows what to expect when they play against them. And I just think, you know what? I think it's their opportunity. They've improved season after season. They've been in the championship. And I think, um, I'm not sure who they've actually signed in all fairness. I kind of just gone off statistics. Um, but I just think that this is kind of their season to either literally be sixth or be seventh or be that close to the playoffs. And I think they'll be 
a bit of a surprise as well for a lot of teams. I think they'll start beating the more bigger teams. I think they'll put a bit of a shock against the likes of Stoke, um, Swansea and stuff who've just been relegated from the Premier League. So, um, but yeah, so I've gone for Brentford. I think uh, not a team to be messed with, if I'm honest. I think you need to take them a bit serious. Yeah. Well, they've, they've possibly like one of these teams that have they've, um, like got a group of players that are playing well. Uh, and if mm-hmm. you don't get through that door after asking a couple of times, this that team sort of breaks apart and the good players go to better teams. And kind of what Peterborough did last year, because I thought they had a, a really good t- uh, set of players, but it never really worked for them. And, and that team's been like broke apart now and they're probably going to mm-hmm. do rubbish. But I get that's probably how Brentford are. Um, That's kind of one my concern with Blackburn as well is more with the likes of Brady Dak. Um, I just think that if we do mediocre this season, which in all fairness we're probably going to be finishing mid table, I think that this gonna if because Brady Dak will be our player this season. I'm telling you right now, he will probably be absolutely smashing it in with Palmer as well. I just think when it comes to the end of the season, you are going to have the likes of Derby and you're going to have the likes of possibly Villa those slightly bigger teams who are pushing the more top and they'll end up snatching him. And I think that'll happen to one or two of our players as well, if I'm honest. Yeah, and then we're... That's my concern now, is especially if you become stale. Because obviously, I know the reason we sold players is slightly different. Um, But I just think that that could possibly happen, especially with the likes of Bradley Dak uh, and possibly a few other players. Yeah, and then we're in trouble. (laughs) But hopefully we get a good chunk of money and we can... I don't know, go out and sign someone, but no one would want to sign for us at that point. <laughs> um, probably sell Dak for like 15 mil. I bet you if we sell him next season, he'd be in double figures. You would hope so. Um, I think he would. I honestly think he would. If he tears it up how he's played pre-season against the likes of Liverpool and um, Everton, that nutmeg flipping love it against Milner. Best thing I've yeah. ever seen. Um, I honestly think he'd be double figures because you've seen players sign for double figures worse than him. <laughs> and if he tears up the championship, he is he'll be gone for like twelve mil easily. Yeah. Well, look at what he did to Jaggy Elko when he scored. Oh, you oh, made exactly. him look like a sack of spud. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! It's for a little guy, you can push someone off the ball, mind. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, he's got. It's well grounded. Um. Yeah. So we're gonna have, we were gonna have a little news section, but uh, me and Matt failed. Um, it was a little new section on the championship. I couldn't really find anything. Uh, I thought Matt was going to like bash Bolton for a bit, but he's decided against that. Um, so we, we're, we're leaning on Dan now. He, he, he made a post <laughs> the other day, so I'll, I'll let Dan just explain exactly what we're, we're going to discuss. Um, so I was having a thought and I was like, I wonder how much of a hardcore fan's some people are and I thought some teams don't really have derbies like I was kind of thinking more of Chelsea isn't it a local derby like Fulham (laughs) literally like same road it isn't really a proper derby when you've got like Burnley Blackburn Man United Man City it's like come on derby day Chelsea's just or teams like that um and I thought would you right you have to pick one or the other no blagging out of this I said this to someone before and they found loot balls and they were trying to get around it. <laughs> um, would you support your rivals? Obviously, I think as a Blackburn fans, this is probably easy going one way. Um, would you support your right rivals or choose to never watch a single piece of football again? I mean, anything. Not even match of the day, not even catching up on highlights, not going to a game, nothing. So I want to know, what would you choose, uh, if I'm honest? I'll, I'll... That was my poll. I'll let Matt go first. Uh, um, <laughs> what, a, what a question, Dan. What a question. Um, and I, I've, I've just gone and voted, so I, I, I'm going to tell you which way I've just, I've just voted. I, I, I've, I've gone with the other 87% and say never watch football again. I could not bring myself to put on a club and blue shirt. I did it, I did it once at school. Because I had a, a, a lot, because I was I was schooled in Accrington, and if you know Accrington, it's it's uh, it's, it's down in between Blackburn and and, uh, uh, and Burnley. So obviously, a lot of kids were coming in from Burnley uh, into Accrington for, for for school and that. So, uh, and we uh, we had a a five-a-side um, interform 
Soccer, um, soccer. What am I talking about? Uh, football. Soccer. Uh, t- soccer. <laughs> wow. Um, soccer. Um, yeah. So we had an inter inter uh, interform football tournament, and um, the, the lad who who brought the kit in, his dad was one of the coaches of the Burnley Academy, well, the School of Excellence at that time. So he brought in the Burnley kit, and I tell you, I I could have been physically sick putting that on. Because it was a full, it was the full Burnley kit. It was the top. It was the shorts. It was the socks. And because he was the uh, the form captain as such, we had to wear it. And if we if we didn't wear it, we didn't, we didn't get to play on it. That was his kind of rules. So I was serious that I was literally nearly physically sick uh, putting that kit on. But I had I wanted to play football, and I wore the kit shamingly. Um, thank God there wasn't any, you know, mobile phones or pictures or well, there was pictures, <laughs> but um, you know, but yeah, I, I would have to say I would not touch another Burnley shirt, uh, and I would I would go and watch rugby league <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, I've got you know, there's, there's a few good clubs around where I live, so um, you know, I, I'd go and watch rugby league. So I don't know how old you are, Matt, but. I'm kind of thinking back when you were at school, yeah. Burnley's centre of excellence were just looking for uh, young kids that weren't beating and raping each other, um, <laughs> rather than because they weren't they in like Division Two. They, they, I think they, I think they were in Division Two, and obviously Blackburn were a Premier League club then. Yeah. So you know, it, it was kind of kind of very uh, below my below myself in um, in. Uh, wearing a Burnley kit because they were they were you know far less uh, of a team than where they are now really uh, but you know that that's um, I'm 35 by the way so I was at, you know I was school um, I was at school until like 99 which obviously then Rovers got relegated to the first division the first time around um, so and then they got promoted in 2001 so. Uh, by that by that time, obviously, I'd left school, but I, it, this was like in the final year, so they were kind they were kind of um, you know they were still in Division Two at that point, so you know less less superior less superior team at that point. See, I you, have Lee, what do you think? I, I've thought about this and I answered <laughs> the the poll. Um, I, I don't know how many. Uh, listeners would lose, but <laughs> I, I I said I I would sport a rival, but <laughs> kind of kind of thinking about it now, I never thought I'd have to put the shirt on. I didn't know whether that was part of it. I don't know whether I could do that. To be fair, turning into a hardcore Burnley fan. This is why this is like you literally go. You know what? If you go, imagine the roles will be reversed. So if you go to every single Blackburn home game, you go to every single Burnley home game. That's yeah. what it would be. It would be that's, that type. You buy every shirt. You do that. That's what I, I'm not. Be. I'm not one of these that are like Burnley. I am a body. I'm not one of them. I'm not like I love playing them. I love beating them, and it, it's really gutting when we we, we lose. And but uh, but I, I, don't I mean, know. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I obviously, I, I think you've if you if you're. A, you know, if you truly understand football, okay, right, rather than say you've got to kind of like really respect what they what they have done. Um, I'm going to lose you a lot more listeners now. You got <laughs> you, you you probably you probably got to you've got to probably like respect what they have done and the you know the the way they've kind of sustained the Premier in the Premier League. I think they might struggle this season. Uh, but I know I'm going off topic here, but I, again, I, I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to wear the shirt and go go to the games. That's my point. Honest. I don't think I could put the shirt on. That is my my falling point. I don't know whether I could I could get that o- over my head. That's that. Yeah, but I'm kind of the same with um like Matt when you said you felt sick. <laughs> like I kind of I like don't get me wrong. I'm same. I respect what they've done so far. I hate them, but it's like it's a thing of like oh, it gives me chills. <laughs> type thing even sometimes i look at the villa shirt and i'm like oh yeah exactly villa, villa scumthorpe who else <laughs> west ham. yeah west ham a little bit west ham, oh yeah. yeah west well west ham yeah mm, so west, west ham anyway you know 
Yeah. To, I don't know. I've always said I would never go to Turf Moor as well. That was, I didn't really think this through, Dan, to be quite honest, when I answered <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just thought I like football, I'll manage. But yeah, when it comes to like completely reversing it, yeah, I'm not quite sure. It, is, it, it, is, quite a hard, it is quite a hard one to make because we're all football fans, literally every Saturday or whatnot. And like throughout the week, we're talking about it. It's like, do you cut that out completely? It is. Um, but I would recommend not going to Turf Moor. My dad's been there and his exact <laughs> words were, um, c- c- I can swear on you, can't I? Yeah. I can quote, uh, quote yeah. for quote, so it's fine. Um, it's the biggest shithole you'll ever go to. I, I think it's called, he's, he's gone there as to watch Sunderland play him. So he hasn't gone there as a bla- to watch Blackburn. Yeah. He's gone there to watch him as Sunderland. So it's like a bit more of a, a neutral comment. It, it, the first thing he said to me straight away, he went, that is an absolute shit or worst team you'll go to in the Premier League. It and is. I like, mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it makes it worse because they're, they're in, you know, they're still in that in that old stand. It's an old stand that it's got wooden seats, for goodness sake. Oh, okay. the, 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 other, the other three stands, I've, I've been a couple of times to watch, to watch Blackburn, uh, once in the FA Cup and uh, once in the, um, the Championship. Um, it was a, it was a seat. It was a, it was the reverse fixture. It was when you know when Will when Lee Williamson got sent off because yeah. he dragged that end back. It was Hero. it was that game. Hero, Hero exactly, exactly. And it was that game. And all the I mean the all all the other sides are more or less kind of like developed in yeah. a way that in, in in such a way possible. Uh, but that that uh, the cricket end stand, which I think James Hargreaves stands, or it, it, it's the one that books uh, backs on to the the cricket end. Right, it, it's it's dire, and I, I always had, um, I, I always said if we actually did the same what Burnley fans did to the uh, Darwin end when they came for the reverse fixtures, they, you know, they, they, they it literally smashed it up. I'm saying if we did the same to to that end at Burnley, we'd actually make an improvement, so we're not going to do anything. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it, it's very dire. I just. I, I just wish they'd use some of the Premier League money to upgrade that stand. So, because every away, you know, every away supporter has got to go into that stand. It's not very reflective of um, a, a Premier, you know, a, a Premier League ground in 2018. That's just me, but not just with Burnley. It's not very reflective of uh, Premier League facilities for away fans in in uh, in 2018, 19 season. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, they've had plenty of money come in as well. Um, with the likes, obviously, um, Keen, they, Keen, is it Keen they sold? Yeah, 50 okay, million yeah. or whatever. But it was expensive, 50 million or something to Everton. So it's like, I know not all of that goes to the stadium and a lot of it covers debts and stuff, but they they have finished they finished sick or wherever it was last season. So they are, they are racking in a bit of money. There's brand new TV deals and everything and stuff. Like, you need that modern era stadium. Like, I think we're quite fortunate that when we had our stadium built, it was... It's built to like last. I think. I think it's kind of no matter what decade you're in now, over the next like 20, 30 years. Yeah. Other than modern technology, it can withstand. With it, it doesn't feel like you're in the seventies. Yeah. Uh, well, um, before we move away from Burnley, what's your answer, Dan? Did you did you say you couldn't? Um, I I voted. I said I would never watch football again. Um, which is kind of a difficult one. Just I I was just like. Same as Matt, I felt sick just thinking of it. Um, like I don't hate anyone or anything. I just, I don't know. I, I thought about it. And I just thought that claret and blue, and I was just like, oh, I can't do it. Like, there's plenty of other sports. I'll get into <laughs> NFL or yes. more into yeah. rugby. Like I watch rugby and stuff because. Of... So, it's like I, I got plenty of other st- sports. I'll get over it. It's fine, <laughs> but it's like. But no, I vote did never watch football again. But the poll, just so you, if just so you all know, is um, it's had 142 votes so far, and 87 percent have said never watch football again, and 30 percent said support rivals. So let us know if you're in the comments or anything what you voted for. Still up on my um, Twitter. This is Golazio. Um, but that comment was actually more aimed towards teams that don't really have a rivalry. So, yeah. with, like where I mentioned the likes of Chelsea and stuff, because I know a lot of Chelsea fans that hop around teams as well. So, I was just like, <laughs> oh, it's kind of, it's kind of, my mate supported like three or four teams. He's finally settled on Chelsea, but he went to like Man City and all this type of stuff. I'm like, oh, mm. calm down, mate. 
but it was kind of more aimed at them. But when you got hardcore fans, I think it's a little, little bit more difficult. But, but yeah, that's the final results: eighty-seven to thirteen percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I'm one of the thirteen percent, but I've changed my mind <laughs> since. Uh, I, didn't really, really? I didn't really think it through. I thought, ah, oh, yeah, I can, I can deal with that. I can't really, I don't really want to stop watching football. Uh, and <laughs> and then when you think of the consequences of what I would have to go through, um, becomes a Pro, lot. pros and cons, mate. Pros and cons. Yeah, I should have made a list. Way. Sorry. <laughs> um, so a, cu- a couple of things just be- before we move on to the massive list of questions again um, obviously not all there's been rumours that he is heading out on uh, or they could be heading out on loan uh, and I was having a-, a conversation with Ian Herbert I think um, over at Twitter um, what do you think we should do Dan do-, do you think he's ready for the first team or do you think we, we get him out and g- give him first team football elsewhere I, I think he needs to just drop down in League One out on loan. Um, don't get me wrong, he's he's done decent when he's played in games. Obviously, he bagged himself a goal pre-season. But I think he does that need. He needs a week-in, week-out football. And I think he needs it ne- this season and then come back next season. Then he'll be more of a prolific goal scorer for us. But no, I think he should honestly go to more of a, um, a top six team in um, League One. And I honestly just loan him out. He'll improve drastically, I think. What do you think about right. Travis? Is he ready? Because obviously there's, um, there's been rumours of him, a uh, lot of interest in him from League One as well. I I think he's um, he's so, he's a solid bench player at the moment. I don't think he should be loaned out only because I don't think he will have the quality of play and uh, actually keep his ability up compared to playing for us. I think if he went to um, a League One side. If he went to a League One side, I hope he went to Sunderland, someone like that, who will more than likely going to get promoted. Um, I just don't. I just think if we keep him in, you probably end up improving a lot more, even if he is just starting on the bench, because he has showed some amazing um, attributes and stuff and skills throughout preseason. So personally, I wouldn't loan him out. I think he sh- he should end up staying. Yeah. Um... Right, so we'll, we'll move on to the questions. Uh, we've got a handful of them again. Uh, not that I'm complaining, obviously. Love the questions, don't get me wrong. Um, this, I think this is an autocorrect. Um, I'll be completely honest. There's no. <laughs> it says Stevie Weston, but I don't remember seeing a Stevie Weston, so I apologise if that's not let me... Um, on Snapchat, so I'll, I'll ask the question to you, Matt, and then I'll try and figure the name out. Um, what points uh, total do you think we'll finish? Uh, of, what point total do you think we should realistically be aiming for this season? Oh, very uh, interesting question, Stevie Weston. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's. I mean, if we just take it back, I mean, look at what happened last year. Um, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna say if we aim to I, I predicted that we'll finish it between tenth and fifteenth. Now last season, um, Sheffield United finished in tenth position. They had sixty nine points, and in fifteenth was Sheffield Wednesday, fifty seven. So if you you work on that, um, I, I would say you, I, I would say we'll be aiming. I think we should try and uh, try and aim, obviously, for the for the, the magical forty two points. Um, but then, if we can try and really push on to finish between tenth and fifteenth, I think you've got to be looking at at, at fifty six upwards. Um, Sheffield United, as I said, got sixty nine. Uh, Bristol got sixty seven. Ipswich, Leeds, Norwich. Uh, got sixty and Sheffield Wednesday got fifty seven. So I think if we, I think if we try and aim for that fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight, nine, sixty, sixty one, maybe I, I think we're, you know, we're going to be finishing in a very respectable uh, place. Obviously, it, you know, there's, there's 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 a lot of football to play between now and uh, and May. Um, so we'll. We, and and perhaps you know some new players that kind of change the dynamics. You know, scores a lot more goals. Uh, you know, to 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 get those points. Yeah. So so what are we aiming for, Matt? Anywhere between fifty and a hundred. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm give a very. I would say between fifty five and sixty one. Right. Uh, what about you, Dan? Um, I I think um, I agree with uh, Matt. To be honest, with a lot of things, it's we are going to be have to be. I think to have a respectable season, we're probably going to be need to push in that kind of mid sixty, low sixty point mark. I think obviously it's kind of nice solid if you compare the last season. Um, 11th 12th position so um yeah i think it will be i think we need to look for around the 60th mark uh which is probably what i think that's about 17 wins something like that um if you include a load of draws and stuff as well so um but yeah i would 63 i think that's a good solid season mid just below mid table i'll be happy with that yeah i was going to say just around 50 uh, because if you look at the league table last year, 50 was mm. was well safe, uh, and then we got relegated on 51. So, um, oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's going to be a tough. I think there's a lot uh, harder teams in it this year, um, especially with us coming up and Wigan uh, and the teams that have come down. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going with between 55 and 60. I think if we can get there, we. We're safe, a nice, easy position in the league. I think that's a respectable season, see, like especially coming up from the championship. Obviously, you don't have many teams that just go out and absolutely belt it and get yourselves like 80 points. But I think that's quite a respectable season, especially with only a couple of signings as well. So, yeah, well, I think, I think we'll be all right. Sheffield absolutely blasted. Sheffield United absolutely like blasted out of the gate last season, didn't they? And they only finished yeah. tenth with uh, 69 points. So if we could mm-hmm. do something similar to that, that that would be a great season, I think. If we can get yeah, top yeah. ten, that's that's a a bloody good year. Um, and it was Stevie Weston, so I apologise for that. I, I completely didn't recognise writing that down. Um, you've got to be joking me. I don't recognise this one either. Or oh, what is going on tonight? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it Kill Cadence Eleven? I think, hopefully, yeah. um, from Snapchat. Um, Matt, will I think we answered this last week, uh, so I'll ask, yeah. I'll ask Dan. Uh, will Chapman be coming back on loan, do you think? I don't, I don't know whether you're asking, will he be coming back on loan, or do you think he could be coming back on loan or a transfer? So I'll answer um, that how you wish. My heart, I want him. <laughs> I would love him on loan. But I think a lot of the comments has come out, especially from Mowbray, um, and also the way he's been playing for Middlesbrough as well. At the moment, I just don't think he'll come back. Like Mowbray's mentioned that they are interested, but they're not main priority. Um, so I'm kind of thinking, you know what? I, I just don't think he'll come back. He's pl- plus as well, he's playing so well for Middlesbrough at the minute. I wish he was doing rubbish just so we could out. So Middlesbrough <laughs> go like, right, go on, have him back. And then he turns into a superstar, but he's absolutely belted at middles at middles per preseason. The goal I seen, well, the goal that he set up and the goal that he did score against, I'm not too sure who they scored against, but absolute cracking. So personally, no, I don't. I don't think he will be, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I think it might not be a quote from Mowbray. I'm pretty sure that he said something similar to this, but um, that Chapman, if he could get him on a cheap, then he would come back. Um, and that would be, a, I'm guessing it would be a permanent deal, but it's same with him and Armstrong. They're not willing to pay the money that their teams want for, for unproven talent, if you will, in the championship. It's a shame because three million for Armstrong is an absolute bargain. See, we were discussing this last week, and if that is, yeah. that's our, if that, that's our tra- pretty much the majority of our transfer budget, and we've wasted it on a player that has not, it mm-hmm. doesn't have a good track record in the championship. Hmm. Um. So yeah, that, that's the conclusion we came to. Yeah, no, I completely understand what you mean from that. It's it is a bit of a it's a shame that we don't have that 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 is pennies in this day and age of football, isn't it? Three mil, yeah, p- pretty much most teams. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is a shame that we don't have that. But I think we are on borderline of financial fair play, though, aren't we? Yeah, that's probably yeah, that's something else that he's got to be looking out at. He's. He's looking at that as well. We still got it. We got accountants and stuff looking into all that stuff as well. So it's, I bet that's a factor, mind. I bet that's a majority factor. Yeah, he'll be on a hell of a. Well, he is on a hell of a wage. Um, mm. So 
I, yeah, there's that to take into account as well. So, yeah. yeah, lots to think of. He has said there is money to spend. I think he came out and said that today, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, did, yeah. So yeah, back back onto the questions. We'll be here all night if we go off track <laughs> on everyone. Uh, Jack dot B dot two thousand and three. Uh, that was I thought that round quite well. Snapchat. Um, I'll ask Matt because I think Dan's posted on his, his Twitter what his thoughts. What's your opinions on the kit, Matt? Uh, they're, they're they're very different, aren't they? Um, yeah. uh, I saw the uh, the well, I saw the away kit that. Uh, that Dan put on uh, Tor Blackburn last week, and obviously that was that was that was leaked by Umbro, <laughs> um, and the home kit was was leaked by um, by Tembet, weren't it? A few, a few, like a, a, about an hour before uh, it was announced on um, uh, on the Rovers Twitter. So the, the the sponsors haven't helped them this year with their kit launches at all. Um, the kids themselves, I mean. It, it, the the away kit's very very bright, um, you know it, it's uh, no no complaints. I know there's been a few negative comments about the home kit. You know it's it's not a true Rovers blue, but if if you if you like your history and 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 you look back, we we have played in that blue before, um, even as recently as um, 2014, 13, yeah. 15. I don't, yeah. So it's um, you know it, we, we have played in that colour before. I think it, it, again it's it, it's it's changed. I think the the blue and white's been flipped back again. So it, you, you never you know, you're not going to please all the people all the time. Just some of the people some of the time, aren't you? So uh, I, I like him. I think I'll be uh, investing in at least possibly the home kit. Uh, I like my blue and white half, so I think I'll be investing in in a, a shirt at least. And um, yeah, so that that's my opinion on 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 this year's kits. Yeah, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the home. I think it's a little too light. Um, mm. But I have said I really don't care what the hell we're playing, as long as we we have a good season. Um, but I do like the the away kit, uh, and I, yeah. I quote, I'm sure I'm quoting. Down with this, that he, he, it's lovely. I think that was your quote, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, yeah. I love, I love a yellow kit, if I'm honest. But it's navy as well. I can't see it on photos. Yeah. Can't see the navy. Um, I have bought myself one. I bought it today, so hopefully that'll be here in the next few days, so I can actually see it. But um, no, I actually, I think the home kit is a bit of a grower for people to like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the exact same one when we had the zebra. I can't. I think it was like you said, 2014, 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just think that I like blue is a bit of a grower, but I absolutely adore the um, the yellow kit. If I'm honest. Um, but I want to mention one thing quickly. I loved what Umbro did when they announced it. They put just in case you missed yes, it. Yes, I did see that. When the official announcement. Um, <laughs> I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I, I I had a look to make sure it was in a, like a, a later on post. But uh, no, it was their first post they put out. I thought, oh, that's a good way to handle someone absolutely screwing something up <laughs> the week before. Yeah. Like surely Rob has got in touch with him and said, you've completely messed up our, our release here. Yeah. Not, a, not a day, but a week. A week before. A week. A week yeah, they've, they've, they've not been helped over this year. I think, they, I think they were looking for like a big kit launch. And, you know, uh, but then I think Tembet, uh, as I mentioned there before, I think they they put it on their side. They because uh, well, they were masters of their own downfall. Because I think Rovers announced that Ten Bet was their sponsor, and, and all of a sudden people are flood, flooding onto Ten Bet's <laughs> website, seeing seeing the home shirt there with with Corey Dara and uh, and Bennett wearing it. So you know it's um, it, it was it was quite funny, it was quite funny. But I mean, uh, as uh, as Dan said, it, it, it is a grower, but. Um, well, I, I think I will be getting that shirt uh, in short sleeve this time. Actually, I'm not going to get long sleeve like I did last year. I don't think they still did long sleeve. To be fair, yeah, 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 still doing. Uh, yeah, I might get the yellow one. The it looks. Good. I like what they've done with the badge. I know some people have said it's not the right badge, but they've just like blended it. And it's all sort of, like blended it in. Um, so it, it looks. <laughs> yeah, they've not blended it in, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, right. <laughs> Welcome to the Nat Briggs seventeen hour. Um, <laughs> question time. Four questions this week, from uh, and we'll go have them all up, one after another. So, um, how many grounds have you both visited from championship teams? Have you visited a few? 
It's going to sound really bad. I've only been to two. Which, which, uh, which were there, Dan? Um, I've been to Stadium of Light. Um, they're not championship. I'll say, I know. Uh, I know the league one now. <laughs> oh, no, no, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there's only one, man. There's only one. <laughs> um, I've been to Villa's ground. Oh, nice, um, nice. It's, the, the inside's really nice. Like I really like it, but I, I just don't like the outside of Aston Villa, <laughs> of Aston in general. If I'm honest, just, it, I don't like it. But it, it, the inside's nice. The inside's nice. Yeah. Um, when I what first walked past it, I didn't even realise it was a stadium. <laughs> what about you, um, Matt? Matt, uh, let's have a look. I've been to Wigan, uh, Stoke, uh, been to Preston. Uh, I'm going to be here a while. Dar- Dar- Derby, Bolton, Villa. That's it. Uh, out, out, that, out of those, uh, I, I quite like Derby. Um, Derby and Stoke. Stoke's, Stoke's quite similar to um sorry w- w- Wigan's quite similar to Ewood because I think the same builders actually built it in a way I think that they're, they're very quite similar design obviously I think the DW is slightly smaller than Ewood but I, I do believe that the same builders built both stadiums uh correct me if I'm wrong uh Stowe's quite nice uh Preston since that was done up, it's quite nice. Uh, Bolton practically live on the doorstep to that stadium. Um, that's all. That's all right. I'm guessing. A bit far away from the pitch. On the even if you are that low down. So uh, and Villa went. I went ages ago when we were still in the Premier League together. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't like Villa. I think they must have done it up since. Um, but uh, I, I wouldn't mind going to Forest. I've been to Forest. I was in uh, a box, though. So uh, it, it was... All right. Okay. But, uh, and perhaps like Bramall, Bramall Lane. Not prison box. Uh, um, well, Bramall no, Lane. The pr- forest. It wasn't the prison box. Forest. All right. Okay. Uh, pr- perhaps like Bramall Lane or Hillsborough. Uh, Ellen Rose. <laughs> Try and get to all of them if I can. Yeah. Um, but uh, Derby, Derby, again, Derby is quite quite a nice one. Uh, I, I went there uh, when Blackburn got promoted back to the Premier League last time. That we had our first away, first game of the season was away at Derby, and we lost two one. Um, so yeah, I, I, it was all right. It quite quite modern back then. Yeah. So you're picking Derby. Der- Derby, yeah. yeah. I, I think. <laughs> Uh, Wigan, Forest, Wolves. I think I think that's it. Uh, well, Wolves are. Uh, hey, if you're going to use that for Dan, it's sort of about Stadium of Light. You can't use Molyneux. Oh no, you can't. Wolves Good, because up. I wasn't going to pick Molyneux. You, it's a shit all. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. I agree. But they're Premier League. Yeah, it was awful. I've been twice. Once. First time wasn't too bad. The second time we were put in broken seats, so we had to move and sit next to a behind a guy that couldn't sit down because his knees were knackered. And then he sat down and jumped <laughs> up when something happened. So his knees were perfectly fine. Um... <laughs> like I've seen it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I'd have to pick Forrest. I was in a, a box and yeah, so I, I, I don't really have a true representation of an away game, but I wouldn't pick Wigan because it was awful. I had a man trying to get me to kiss his arm. Um, <laughs> just weird experiences when you go on Rovers away games really is um, so yeah I'd, I'd go with Forest, although it's kind of tainted by being in a box um, question number two God we're going to be here all night um, Dan favourite I'll ask this it's favourite player and least favourite so do either of you have any preferences or do I just pick away do you want to answer both um... <sighs> Player in, in what sense? Uh, I'm guessing current squad. So who's your favourite player? And I'm going to say you can't pick that Bradley Dak because it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's take him out of the My... equation. So yeah, go on, Dan. You pick favourite and least favourite. Dav- David Rea, absolute moment he came onto the scene. I've loved him ever since. Um, so he's probably my favourite player at the moment. 
Um, and my least favorite player, um, just because he's a tool bag and because I never thought he was a decent player anyway, is Corey Evans. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. But I think everyone understands why. What about you, Matt? Uh, favorite player. I guess at, at the moment, I'd, I'd go with uh, Bennett. Yeah. Um, I think I think he's just he's just like a, I don't, he's just got kind of like a fan's favorite. Everyone kind of uh, the the thing that they've had on the official site, Agent Benno this week is just practically fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, I think he kind of like connects with the fans. Um, you know. Uh, the, you know, there's there's always kind of like fans flocking a, a, around him. He's very, you know, he's very, you know, he takes time out to uh, take pictures, and obviously um, he, he's brilliant on the pitch there as well. He's, you know, he, he likes to tackle. Um, you know, good, you know, basically a good footballer for us, really. Uh, least least favorite. I know it's kind of a kind of a tough one. I don't like I don't like to dislike any any player to be honest, but. Um, the the one the one player I don't think I wouldn't mind seeing out the door would be Cadis. Yeah. Uh, not you know I, I just don't don't think he fits what we what we need to do this this year. I wouldn't say he's the kind of least favourite. I don't think I have a least favourite foot player at Blackburn. So um, just, I, I'd have to say the most person I want out you know the most player would want out the door is like Paul Cadis because I don't think he would fit into the Mowbray's way of play and I, I fully expect him to probably depart very very soonish. Yeah. Well you're kind of taking it all away. So my favourite player is Bradley Dack, so that's quite easy. <laughs> um no I would have picked Benno to be honest because he, I think like you said he's yeah. he's everyone's favourite at the moment and he's just class act. Um yeah. least favourite um yeah I'm not sure. Uh <laughs> go Cadis again purely for the same reasons as you that He's probably the one person that um, isn't really in the t- in the side mm-hmm. at any point. He yeah. doesn't even play um, football at the minute. You no, can... this is what we were saying last week. He's not. He's more of a builder than a football player. Yeah, he would blend in really well. You put a hard hat on him, he'd be straight in there. <laughs> <laughs> he would. There was a there was an image from the Stanley game, and I, I tweeted it to Tom saying. Uh, is this kind of what you were mentioning in the podcast? He just, he does not look like a football player. No. Um, but yeah, let's not dig at him again. I love you, Paul Cardis, if you're listening. <laughs> you're listening uh... Yeah, stop going to McDonald's. <laughs> um, next. <laughs> um, right, we answered this last week, so I'll, I'll, I'll aim this at you, Dan. What's your preferred starting eleven for the season? Oh, um. Oh, what formation are we playing at the minute? I'm trying to think. Um, See, that's that's the thing. I have said last week that because of the squad that we had and the players, yeah. you could only look at playing three at the back with five because I don't think we have any wingers. Now, maybe Palmer changes that a little bit. but um, I would go with like like a 3-5-2 or something or like a you know wing-back side type of thing. Um, yeah. I would probably end up, um, obviously, David Rea in goals. Um, my three centre backs, if there was, I would have Mulgrew, Lenian, uh, Downing. Uh, oh wow! Um, and then for my wing backs, we'd have Mister Reliable, Mister Consistency, Williams at the left. Um, on the right hand side, I would have uh, Travis. Um, and then oh, I'm trying to think of the formation now. A three when I'm one in it, uh, and then my midfield would be Palmer Small. Oh god, this is hard actually. It's a struggle fitting them all in there. It is, yeah. It is. It's really hard actually. Um, because obviously I'd dark and attack. Uh, Smallwood has to be in there, and I don't know if it's Bennett or Palmer because Palmer is a centre mid, any all attack and midfield. Um, yeah. Oh. I would like to see Palmer in there, if I'm honest. Um, and then striker, yeah, it's quite a tough one at the minute. At the moment, going off pre-season, I would like to see Samuel in there. Oh, wow. Only because I mm. he, he started early. He started pre-season early. I've been watching him graft on Instagram. And literally, he just seems to be putting the effort in at the moment. And he seems to be in the right place for Dak. 
that's what it seems to be like um, from the goal he scored preseason. So that's my initial one. I can't fit Bennett in. I wanted him at the start, but I don't know where. So who were your three midfielders? Because that's you'd need. Would you need three midfield? Yeah. Yeah, you'd have. Uh, so yeah, Bradley Palmer, Dax, Smallwood. Palmer, Smallwood, and then Bradley Dax. So it'd be like our triangle. Would Dak not play behind Samuel? Is that is that not what right? An attacking midfielder then, Bradley Dak would be, and then the way was it three five? It's, yeah, you still you're missing a player, aren't you? Am I? Samuel, yeah, yeah Samuel no. top, Dak behind him, and then three behind them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, it's I'm right. Not. It's you have Smallwood, Palmer, and Dak as my three in the middle. But Brady Dat's technically just behind the striker because it's five in midfield. And they are my wing backs, which is Travis and. Oh, wait, I don't know now. Yeah, you got five. Well, if yeah, you count yeah, five at the back out, with yeah, the three defenders out, yeah, and two yeah, wings. Yeah, one out now. Um, oh, Bennett can go in there somewhere. I don't know where he <laughs> can go in there. <laughs> I should have wrote that down, if I'm honest. <laughs> God, that's why I'm not a manager. But um, I'm not <laughs> sure, but Bennett has to be in there somewhere. Probably Bennett be in midfield somewhere. Yeah, he has to be on the pitch at least yeah, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Exactly, yeah. My surprise is that you've um, not included Niambi uh, and put <laughs> Williams at left back and not at centre back. That's. that's. Mm, I don't know. But, that would be my yeah. starting 11 for, if, if I had to go for it. Yeah. Um. Right, next one. What's next? Um, what's your score? This is again from Nat Briggs, 17. All these last four questions have been from her. Um, what's your score prediction for the opening game of the season against Ipswich, Matt? Uh, I'm going for a 2 0 Blackburn Rovers win. Uh, what about you, um, Dan? I'm so um, used to saying Tom, I have to like <laughs> think first. I'm I'm probably gonna go for um I would say probably a one one. I would say and I'm gonna make a bold prediction with Bradley Dat getting the opening goal. Oh um using your team, I'm gonna go two one goal from Samuel and Mulgrew. Nice free kick or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Daniel Davis, Twitter. What are you most excited about going into the new season? Also, what player are you most looking forward to watching? Um, Dan. Um, to be honest, this season, I'm kind of most excited just to see us stabilise a little bit. Um, and the Mowbray and Mowbray having a full season in the championship. Um, I don't think there's anything more excited to be about the season other than that. I think it'd just be nice to be stable. Um, play I'm kind of looking forward to most watching. It'll probably have to be one of the new guys. Um, uh, probably end at Palmer, if I'm honest, to see how well he actually... Actually, no, I change that. If, if Travis actually ends up staying, I'm excited to see how he actually does in the first team and if he actually ends up being um, pushed into the first team more. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about uh, just the season starting. Uh, and... Uh... And then I'm looking forward to seeing what Dak can do in the championship. Can he step it up? Mm. What about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to agree, really. Um, excited to see, you know, how how much hopefully Bradley Dak is will, will kick on. Uh, I think he's wanted to play this level for for quite some time. We, you know, he, he's got the stage now to, to go and do it. Um, hopefully, he's a bit free of distractions as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's exciting for him to to be at that level. It'd be interesting to see how a Palmer plays alongside Dak. You know what what the you know what the attacking lineup looks like. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it really. Um, it'd be good to have uh, his, his Saturday afternoons taken up by looking at Rovers, of course, again. Yeah, refreshing Twitter. Um, but yeah, back onto the, that uh, the formation slightly. If we play four at the back, um, three, and then two, which Palmer and Dak behind like a Samuel, imagine how strong that would be. 
That'd be pretty an epic. I, uh, I, think be, I think that'd be a really strong lineup actually. It's like, oh, I also I hope Samuel does well. But if we bring in that lone player that's been mentioned from Man City, the original yeah. one that we was going to buy is now out the window apparently, um, according to the guy from Lancashire Telegraph, which name has gone past me. Um, um, oh my you God. know exactly who I'm all about, though, don't know. Um, oh. Richard, Richard, Richard Sharp. Richard, Richard Sharp. Um, so <laughs> the the player that we are after at Man City as well, like he's done, he's doing well preseason. So I think even just with Samuel and even for, um, Graham, that's a that that front three essentially that triangle is going to be a force to be reckoned with, like yeah. really well. A smedal, a smedal. <laughs> <laughs> New name for Smallwood and Bennett. Uh, Smallwood and Bennett, they're in a three with like Davenport or Rothwell just like stopping everything. Um, I think we might win the league. Oh, my God. It sounds like we've got a tonight. solid side, doesn't it? <laughs> you look at it. I'm so biased. It, it, it all depends how he's going <laughs> to... It all depends how, how Mowbray's going to play him, obviously. But... Yeah. Um, final question. Finley McKenna, uh, Twitter. How well do you think Casey Palmer will play this season? Uh, Dan? Um, I think he would be just below the level of Bradley Dak. How he that was is in... a massive statement. That is a massive statement. I, uh, he's done well at Huddersfield. He's done well at Derby. And Chelsea haven't kept him for no reason. So um, I honestly think that he's probably going to be at... So the level that Bradley Dak was at in League One, Bradley Dak would probably end up replicating the enough very sim- similar and probably a little lower because tougher league. I think Palmer would be, I think, close enough to that. I think that the part- the partnerships when it starts working is going to be so enjoyable to watch. And I think Palmer would probably be right up there just behind Dak. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Are you excited? Is he gonna is he gonna light it up? Yeah. <laughs> Again, pretty much how I was with with that class season. Didn't know a lot about them. Um, and same with same with Palm is kind of like been under my radar really because I only really look what's in front of me as as far as kind of um, our team's concerned. Uh, but yeah, I, from what the you know the clips that I've I've seen of Palmer and his, you know, his flicks and tricks and link up play with, with strikers and his teammates. It he it, it, it brings a different kind of blend to the squad. Um, you know, gives it perhaps like a, that extra bite I was talking about last week. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting to to see how how uh, Mowbray fits. You know, all the guys in all the guys into his side who he's got, and it, you know, he's he's still looking to bring more players in. Um, of the ilk of a Casey Palmer, you know, young, young hungry players, which which we've which we do need. Um, but as as I've said before, and as I said towards the back end of last season, we need we need players who we've got from last season to take that extra step up because it is going to be a tougher league this time. Yeah, yeah, and it's all starting. We'll quickly look forward to uh, to Ipswich, um, which is coming up in just a couple of days. Um, we start the, the tough test of the championship. Obviously, they finished uh, comfortably in 16th place last season, but that was the lowest finish since 1959, which is a hell of a long time ago, before we even won the World Cup. <laughs> um, so Mick McCarthy took it upon himself and, and quit during a, a press conference uh, straight after the match, I think, um, after six years. And they've got a new man in charge, which I think is Paul Hurst. Um, don't really know yeah. much about him. I think. Do you? It, it was it was at uh, Shrewsbury last oh, year. Right. Um, so he he um, he knows he knows he knows a bit about you know playing against Blackburn. Um, so yeah, he's, he was he was named uh, Ipswich manager in during the summer. Um, he's uh, he, he's rocking the boat with his um, former club though, because I think that. Uh, Two, you know, two four, two of his former charges at Shrewsbury have both put in transfer requests, and um, Shrewsbury have turned down bids for um, is it Nolan um, at at, uh, at Shrewsbury? So it's uh, you know they they, they turn you know they they turn down bids um, there. So it's. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be very interesting. Like I say, it, 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 that new that new manager feel. You don't know kind of what the 
John, yeah, John Nolan actually uh, is going back, but um, yeah, John Nolan uh, is he, he did quite well. He's, he was quite you know quite fancied in the, in in League One last year. I think he was one of their most important players at Shrewsbury that got them up to where they where they got to in you know unfortunately they did fall in the in the in the final in the playoffs but um so yeah um it's it's gonna be interesting to see what how how um you know how he how he adopts uh, adapts into life at Ipswich it is a higher league um he's brought in um uh, just signed the young uh, young lad young right back from uh, Stanley um, which coincidentally will pay for Stanley's changing rooms. Um, Ellis Harrison, uh, John Edwards, Welshman. I hope I've said that right, Dan. Uh, and uh, Jordan Roberts as well. So, uh, but the, he's, he's left. He's, he's let a lot of their kind of um, good players, leave, like McGoldrick. He's gone to Sheffield United, and uh, yeah. So. It, 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 all change there, Ipswich. If they've signed Elias, uh, Elias, Ellis Harrison from Bristol Rovers, then that's a cracking signing. Yeah, uh, I would have loved to have him. He's a quick player, good player. Again, I think he was one of the names mentioned, yeah, linked with was. us at one he point. Was, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he's a cracking little player. Um, but yeah, obviously, it, Paul Hurst is. is Knows what he's doing with a, a side that was tipped for relegation last season. He very almost got them promoted. So, can he do the same at, at Ipswich? Um, do you think there's someone we're going to be competing with this season, um, Dan? I, yeah, I think they will be, if I'm honest. I think when we have been in the championship, they've been a team that we competed with. Um, so, I think I think it'll be the exact same again. I think they'll end up probably finishing around literally a place or two um around us so but yeah they'll be they'll be a, a team that we're competing with i yeah and um yeah that's that's basically it looking forward to to which which we've we've all said that we well you said we we're going to draw didn't you down a nice easy did, yeah good point of the first day of the season but yeah are, are you going either of you long way down uh no i, I i'm not going i'm not going so, uh, sadly not. I think um, we'll. Um, I just have to look at my look at my diary and choose my away games carefully. But I've I marked the the certainly the Bolton game and and Wigan um, and perhaps like a, another couple as well. So yeah, bring on the season. I say. Yeah, it's coming up now. It's so close, and um, yeah, I can't wait now. I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Couple more signings. Obviously, how long is it now? So it's not long now. Only a week. A couple of days, yeah. A week until the the transfer window closes. A week or so. Um. So yeah. Hopefully, I think he's got some moves coming. Um. So hopefully. I, I'm kind of hoping they are because all this age and Benno thing is going to be annoying. <laughs> it's gonna be yeah. Gonna make me get it if I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a, a lot of fuss just for the uh, the Palmer deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Dan, for coming on. It's been it's been good talking to you. Good hearing your opinions. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, thank as always, Matt. And uh, I'm presuming you'll be on next week. Oh yes. <laughs> um, hopefully, we'll have three points. And uh, we'll be heading into the, the first home game of the season with three points on the board. Could be could be top. Who knows? Top of the championship. Um, but yeah, let's hope hope we get a good result. And it's exciting. But thank you very much for listening to us. Witter on for an hour and 20 minutes or whatever it's been. And um, we'll see you again next week. Hopefully with three points in the bag. And um, yeah, enjoy your travels down to Ipswich if you're going. Thanks very much and uh, goodbye. Thank you for listening to this week's show. If you've enjoyed it, head over to our Twitter at Rovers underscore chat and let us know. And also don't forget to get your questions in for next week's show and check out the website roverschat.com for all the latest news and opinion articles.